light. And we are live. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be tuning in from. Welcome back to another hashtag Together at Home webcast from your folks at Buffet Crampon USA. I hope you're having a lovely Thursday and we're very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Declan Lynch and I am the low brass product specialist here at Buffet Crampon USA. And as is the case now, every week we have a fantastic guest and I have none other than one of our amazing uh, best and performing artists, Aaron Campbell. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Declan, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. We're, we're really excited to talk about a couple things. Uh, as you, if everybody tuning in knows, this is titled The uh, Euphonium in the Digital Age. Uh, Aaron has become known as kind of one of the, the online brash gurus out there. He has a fantastic YouTube channel called a, uh, AK, AKC Youth, uh, which we will be diving into and talking a lot about that I actually explored in college a lot of. And uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, just a quick reminder that we have changed our time. Uh, we used to be every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on the Buffet Crampon New York showroom page, but that's changed a little bit. We are now every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern time right here. Uh, please make sure you change that, that notification in your calendar to make sure that you are not sitting in your laptop in Thursday afternoon because we will not be there. So please make sure you are there uh, here at 6 p.m. We're here every week uh, and we should be, you know, next week we'll have some fantastic content from more of our uh, product specialist colleagues here at Buffet Crampon. So please make sure you tune in for those. Aaron, thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it again. Um, I think you're, you're one of the people I've really wanted to have on for a while because uh, while we have been doing this throughout the most of the pandemic, this little interview here, you are, have uh, you actually have way more experience doing this than I think any of us have with how much content you put out. Oh yeah, and it's it's funny too because I you know we're we're currently on the Zoom platform, right? But it, it, I don't know how they managed it or what they did and how Zoom became like the default platform for all of these things but it's wonderful because you can record off of zoom itself and all that kind of stuff but i was doing it originally like with weird plugins to make <laughs> skype skype record these things and like t like office and teams and all sorts of stuff so it's it, it's really it's been fun and then it, it it you know seemed like i had a leg up on everybody on how to figure out you know the past year and and organizing things like this so well, and you know, speaking of, of using Zoom as a platform, obviously we started this uh, out of the pandemic, you know, as something to, to connect with our artists and people and you know, musicians and players out there. Uh, and we always started it off by asking our guests what they have been up to in the pandemic. But obviously, we are in a very different time now uh, than we were, you know, whatever it is, a year and a half ago. But regardless, you know, what have you been up to? It's, it's been quite a year, but what have you done to keep yourself busy? It has been quite a year, hasn't it? Um, well, I mean, we live in, I mean, I'm, in, I'm just a little bit down the road from you in Tampa here. And um, so we live in a little bit of the Wild West when it comes to like restrictions and stuff. Um, but I mean, been at it. We're, I've been I've been teaching at the University of Tampa and that's been great. The studios boomed up a little bit. We were able to, we started our October Ween. They started doing that. They also started having tuba studio um, studio recitals because it's a small school. Um, this is the probably the biggest the studio's ever been. Um, so we've been doing a lot of those a lot of those things, um, doing recitals. I started my doctorate at the University of Florida and been working with Dr. Van Tynan on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, thanks. And so uh, and also we were able to get the come around spring. Um, so I'm the president of the Tampa Brass Band as well as somebody who plays in the band. And um, we were able to get that started and rolling. We were able to have one concert before the summer season was, or the spring season was over. So um, I was very excited when May rolled around. I was actually very busy throughout the entire <laughs> pandemic. So I've been taking full advantage of the summer thus far. That's awesome. And it's it's really good to hear not only, you know, that, that things are, are certainly improving, but that things were, were very positive regardless of the situation you know that you were able to keep yourself busy and, and things like that so it's really good to hear that and we actually uh were really lucky to have aaron in here for a day during the pandemic i think it was right before christmas time was it not or was it my or maybe it was that sounds right yeah it was yeah right that sounds right christmas. uh aaron came by to try out a couple of you a couple of new euphoniums and he took one of these lovely bad boys home with him um uh the gold lacquer prestige euphonium uh, which you were on a, you were on a 2051 before, if I correct? Yep. So 2051, so so quite the change. Um, 
So I, I remember kind of picking your brain about it because at the time we had a couple different things and and I remember it was very, you know, it, it was a very quick process. A lot of times, you know, the person will spend quite a, quite an extensive period kind of figuring out the instrument, but it seemed very, very plug and play for you. So, you know, what were the differences between the, you know, going from the 2051 silver to something, you know, a little bit bigger and also gold? <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting and it might, and I'm, I'm going to list off a string of experiences that might have helped me with that plug and play ability, or I might just be an idiot and I just <laughs> have it that way. I um, but when I, what, not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went and when I went to go get my, my own Christmas present, um, to myself, um, you know, I, I've been, I've been put in a blessed situation. Like I said, I'm, I'm right down the road from you guys. So pre-pandemic if you guys had anything in that you were interested in and or if any shops had anything from buffet and courtois minor wesson included uh, on top of besson if you guys had anything you know i would I, I could get my hands on it pretty easily and i could go try it and talk about it and all that so i've been trying a lot of instruments for content sake for youtube's content sake and uh and so i just kind of got used to feeling out if it was a good instrument or if i liked it 10, 15 minutes in, you know, um, and also just having so many students, you know, I teach a lot of high school kids who buy instruments. Um, sometimes they're the ones I suggest, sometimes they're not, but I always try them. And, and, and through those experiences, I've just been able to get that to happen. Um, so, you know, it was very, it was very much just like plugged in, played some things, was ready to go and was able to feel out some things. And I don't know, if there was anything, if I don't know if I, I can't, I can't tell you if it's like the bigger bore or if it's the gold or anything like that. But I felt when I played the instrument way more com like not even way more, slightly more comfortable than I did on my on my previous instrument. And the thing is, is like, and I, I think I told you when I was there, I was just like, I just think it's a different vibe for different people, different things. You're gonna feel it out. You're gonna feel what you like. You're gonna hear the sounds you like. Um, the, the number one benefit, all honesty of the gold that I've noticed so far is I can touch it yep. and I don't have to wipe it down. I, everything, it sounds great. And it does sound, it has a slightly different sound profile, um, which every ensemble I've played in has absolutely loved it. They do say, Hey, you do sound a little bit different. They notice it more, I think on the other end of the bell than I do. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that whole, like. I don't look at it and it smudges is very nice <laughs> in comparison to the tuba behind you where I feel like I have to power wash it on a regular basis to keep it clean. Well, it, it's funny you mentioned the, the tarnish. I was actually just, just talking with my, my colleague Matt off, off screen before. And normally when you see that glowish hue between the valve block from your silver plated instrument, it's a good sign you need to clean your instrument and, and it's more of a detriment than it is overall. But in this case, you look and you see that and it's a, it's a positive. You're like, oh, I can see that. And I can see the reflection and everything. And it's, and it's much more of a, of a fun thing to look at as opposed to I need to clean my horn and, and take care of this. Yep, yes. And, and the thing is too, I mean, like, it was moving from one extremely good instrument to another extremely good instrument. So it's not like when you go from like, you're like high, whatever your high school might happen to have for you. And then you go to a prestige. Like, it's not like that. Oh my God. It's not like that. It's just like you, you play and you go, okay, I see what you're doing. You know, I see how this is and, and all that sort of a thing. So I definitely, I mean, I definitely, every single person who has asked me about it, I definitely suggest trying the other ones alongside it if you're getting one for the first time and feeling out what you have but it's been working for me i love it <laughs> that's awesome and, and my student say, sounds really good with my old horn too so. <laughs> <laughs> well that's really cool that that you kind of get to keep you know i actually i bought my horn from, or bought my teacher's horn uh in college and, and had the same situation where he'd be like i think you should try this i know for sure that it'll work i promise so there was it was a really cool little situation that we get to have. So I'm I'm, I'm glad to see that you get to have that as well. It's it's really fun. But jumping into the the headline of this, uh, as I said there early in the title, uh, the euphonium in the digital age. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, as I mentioned at the beginning, Aaron runs a, a really cool YouTube channel, uh, AKC Youth, where he posts post a lot of different content in regards to uh, performances, uh, a podcast called the Young Musicians Podcast, which is really cool and has some really great guests offering. Uh, really great info for, for young musicians that are coming up and, and starting their careers. Uh, for me, what I discovered originally uh, when I was in college was 
with some really cool uh, content about different mouthpieces and practice mutes uh, and things like that. Um, so where did that start? You know, what was the inspiration to, to start, you know, putting out content like that? Because it, prior to that, it really didn't exist. You know, so much of what we talk about as brass players is, is word of mouth, you know, like, oh, what do you think of that mouthpiece? Oh, it feels like this. Or it, it says or it's like that, and and you hear that from your friends, and and when you don't have that, you know, another option, it becomes very difficult to make a decision. So so what what kind of inspired that? Um, first off, I want to I really like the title that you titled this, and I'm gonna steal it for probably some sort of ITEA presentation <laughs> idea or something like that, because um, that's that sounds really good. Uh, the digital age. Uh, no, but it was, it was kind of like a three tiered inspiration process. Um, the first thing I know, so when I first started freelancing, when I was like 26, um, fresh out of graduate school, I picked up a lot of private lessons, but the problem with teaching private lessons specifically as like my main income source, um, is that you can't do anything at, and with them, with those students until 4 PM mm -hmm. because, and also <laughs> you're essentially working when other people aren't working. And so also there's nothing for me to do with other people because unless I was at a school doing a particular thing, and this was before I had the university job, if, unless I was at a school doing a particular thing, from when I woke up to starting teaching lessons, I was pretty much off. And so I don't know about the rest of you all out there, but I have uh, productivity anxiety. Whereas if I, and like a lot of us develop this in the college practice room where we're like, I need to be doing something. I need to be doing something. And so I was trying to find out what can I do with this extra time that I have? Um, and then I started really thinking about social, the social media stuff. And then I thought about, well, I grew up in a teeny tiny town in Virginia um, <clears throat> where there, I mean, there are more cows than people. And there was like, it wasn't like you could take lessons with the local college professor and get his, you know, pick their brain on anything it, there, that didn't exist. You couldn't even find like, there weren't a lot, like my school did not have a university, like my city did not have a university in it. And so I was like, you know, what can I build a resource to help me help that kid, those types of people. And then I realized we were like, we were just talking about right before the, you know, the record button hit, we were talking about monitors, right? And so what would anybody do if they were looking for a new monitor? You would find some like YouTube review or something like that. And I was just like, why, why can't I treat what we do in music like, like any of those like product reviews or, you know, ed, you know, just like talking about things. Website. And of course I have performances on there and stuff like that. But um, we live in a world now where I think there are just so many, and it's great. There's so many fantastic players out there. Um, but the bad part is, is I don't think you're going to get noticed just because you're a fantastic player. Yeah. Right. And you have to, if you want to make a name for yourself or you want to, you know, be just, if you want to be a little bit uh, more out there, you have to do, you have to do things that are slightly different or go about things some slightly differently. And, you know, I can play Rhapsody for Euphonium, but so can Stephen Mead, you know? So do we really need me to record that for the 900th time, which I did, it's on there. It's on, I've got a video of it up there, but like, can I also like give my thought processes on, you know, the last video I was able to do before the pandemic hit in person was a vlog SME. and I'm giving my perspective at, you know, and advice on, Hey, you're going to a music conference. So hopefully that middle schooler who made Florida all state for the first time, can check out that video and kind of get an idea for what they're going into. And if I can help out in any way, shape or form and give my opinions on some things, I'm more than happy to do that and reach a, and reach a broader audience with it. And, you know, I, I love you, the, the, like you mentioned the, the Florida Allstate thing. Uh, I am by no means a, a popular teacher, but I have a couple, a few students out here and, and going through that process, I, I was able to find YouTube videos like that, like you, what you're talking about and show them like, this is what this is. This is what the process looks like. You know, if you, if you get in, this is what the whole, whole shebang is like. And I think that is so cool, especially for young kids coming up who, I remember going to Allstate for the first time when I was, you know, their age and I had no idea what I was getting into. And, and if I could have seen it, you know, beforehand and at least have an idea, I probably would have had a better idea of how to go about, do, you know, getting the most out of it, which I think is really, really cool. But then the, the really cool things that I discovered in college were, 
for the product videos. You know, I remember there was the mouthpiece one was really cool. There was, you know, ones about practice needs, uh, the, the LaFrec um, uh, components and different things like that. Like all of that is so, so cool. And it, and it gives the students something to actually look at. Um, I remember specifically the thing that stuck out to me uh, in college was that there was a small uh, Blue Ranger Funko Pop that would sit in the background of each video. <laughs> and immediately I grabbed onto that because I was like, wow, another low brass player who also finds these like semi nerdy things kind of cool. That's really cool. And, and I immediately I had this connection, which I think is, is somewhat rare in, in our small world of, of low brass players. Yeah, I mean, so if you look, I mean, obviously, first off, I've I've embraced the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle <laughs> of Florida, you know, so a floral shirt is my kind of go to. But I've really, you know, I thought about, you know, coming, I, so I teach, I teach a lot of middle schoolers, right? And what I've learned is, is they are way more receptive to me if I am me and I don't, if I don't try to hide who I am. And like, so what you see behind you right now is a lot of is you know a, a lot of my personality what you don't see that my students see who come in here if you don't mind i'm gonna take you all on a trip for a second but like this whole thing i've got a raichu right here on my desk i've got like anime figures there's that blue ranger that you were talking about right my mouse pad is an anime thing like i am not i am not like oh i'm not gonna have these cartoon characters on my you know my i've got i've got a like a pikachu and a chocobo up there like I'm okay with showing my personality and who I am because I do feel like, especially the generation right behind me, you know, what I guess the Gen Zs as, as, as they're uh, hatefully called sometimes, but like that, the, the people I'm dealing with, the young college kids the, to the middle schoolers, um, they have grown up in this world where they just see advertising and they can understand, like they see somebody being disingenuous and I never, I don't want to be that person, but also I don't want them to come in here I want them to feel like they are in a professional environment, but I also don't want them to feel like they're coming in and it's like a doctor's appointment mm -hmm. necessarily. Like I, you know, I didn't show it, but like my degree is hanging on the wall. Like <laughs> there's still like the touches of like the adult, but also like, I'm not afraid to let them know who I am. And I try to show that on the YouTube page as well of like, yes, you know, I, you know, I'm working on my doctorate in euphonium and I, you know, like I'm writing a book and like, oh, mur, mur, mur. I'm doing all those sorts of things, but also I play Kingdom Hearts on stream. Like, yeah. and I, and like you, we are human as well. Yeah. Right. Um, Cause I want to be approachable. I like the whole point of making things was to become a resource for people and, and try to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And if they don't feel like they can approach me to ask questions and that's a moot point. I think that's super, super refreshing. Like you said, you know, the, the, the generation prior, you know, and, and some of the ones before that, you know, there was no, you, the, the, the generation really sees that, that right through many of those things. And, and like what you're saying, where, you know, the student walks in and, and they see some of your personality and that stands out and it's really, really cool. Um, and something immediate, like it, it works as I, <laughs> as it worked for me when I started watching some of these videos, because I, I immediately noticed it and was like, ah, this is a, place that I can come back and check out some really cool things because I, I immediately was able to make a connection well outside of anything that had to do with whether I played a tuba or a trumpet or, or whatever it was. What advice do you think you have for, and, I, and I'll take a quick moment to say, uh, there's a slight, slight problem we seem to be having with uh, the connection to Facebook right now. Uh, for some reason, we, I don't, we're not able to see that some of the chats or comments coming in. So if, if you're commenting with questions, I, I apologize. We're having some sort of technical difficulty, but if you if you have anything, don't worry. We will make sure to try and, and address those things uh, in the coming days. And, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to post them in there and we'll do our best absolutely to get back to them. Um, but back to, the, back to the main point, um, what advice do you think you would have for uh, for kids that are, you know, musicians growing up right now that, that see stuff like what you're doing with, with podcasts and with product reviews and things like that, what advice do you have for them that, that they want to start doing these things? So first off, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Um, and I think, you know, if there's any, if, if you want to do something, go for it. That, that's, that's the big thing. And I'm not going to lie. When I started you know, we're talking about like the, you know, the Blue Ranger and stuff like that, because I, you know, I started this whole thing because I've been watching Philip DeFranco since, 
you know, 2006 as my news source. I've, you know, I've been watching, you know, I remember watching the Smosh Pokemon videos and I, I always wished, you know, cause we had, we had the David Childs, you know, concert at proms. That was our big, that was like the videos that we watched and like the Stephen Mead videos. And, and there were, there was like a handful of videos that you just watched, you know, but there was, you know, there wasn't a lot of like YouTube, YouTube content or Instagram or, and now, you know, TikTok is becoming great. And there's a ton of people just doing fantastic things. And if you're looking to get involved in that space now, genuinely think it's a great idea. I've already said this earlier, but be yourself. Don't, don't try to act like anyone else. Be yourself. You're going to find other YouTube channels or content creators, let's say. You're going to find other people who interest you, who are exciting to you. And I suggest, um, I suggest you trying to create your channel out of the gumbo of your personality, how they handle things. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be one, one necessary person. If you watch my videos, it is, vi and if you watch my videos and then you watch like the two or three channels that I watch at nauseum, like my fiance who has watched all of my videos, but also watches videos with me on a regular basis, sees what is, um, she sees, you know, Phil, like I said, Phil DeFranco in my videos. Yeah. Right. And, and so you're going to, you're going to find that stuff, but it's going to be, you're going to try really hard to like do things a certain way or be like somebody else. Try to do what you want to do. Now that doesn't mean you can't do like I do, you know, a lot of product reviews. That doesn't mean you can't also do product reviews. You have a different voice than I have. So you're going to impress somebody in a different way. You're going to, you might say something that I wouldn't have thought of or something along those lines, but Try just make sure you're not like, oh, well, I want to do it like this person. That's great, but make sure you also do it like you. That's the biggest thing I can say. Being genuine is more important than anything else. Um, and then just just also the other thing that I will mention is um, especially it seems like in the brass community sometimes, uh, but in any community, things can tend to be a little harsh um, when it comes to comment sections and stuff like that it is typically more a reflection on them than it is of you right my first if you go back and watch my first video it is god awful the video that declan mentioned here i cringe watching it now right you're gonna get better you're gonna become smarter you're gonna have a better opinion on things you got to start somewhere and pushing that record button for the first time is really really intimidating um and you might get feedback back that's gonna make you feel like well why am i even doing this just keep going not every uh, the the good ones the good people are the ones who are nice and the the people that you want whose opinion you should value are the ones who are telling you good things mm -hmm. well i was going to ask what the biggest challenge is with with doing things like that and i i think you answered the question right there i thought you know thought it might be editing or, or getting sound right or anything like that like oh there's a learning curve don't get me wrong you got it you got to figure stuff out right you got to you have to figure stuff out we don't like I did not just know how to work DaVinci Resolves when I edited on. I did not yeah. know how to work that. I did not necessarily have equipment. My whole, my entire channel was filmed on an iPhone for two years. You know, with, with Mac, you can tell, you can tell the videos if you go through them, which I don't suggest, but if you go through all of my videos, you can tell when I moved from iMovie to DaVinci Resolve. You can like see that moment. You can tell when I upgraded from an iPhone to a Canon. Right. You, and typically it's you, it's when I move locations, like the backdrop just changes. <laughs> um, there's, there's a learning curve, but that stuff, I mean, it's great. And it's weird too, because it becomes knowledge that I can use for other things. Mm -hmm. um, like just being back in graduate school, for instance, like a lot of my colleagues are having a really hard time doing projects, especially in the past year, because so much of it has been digital. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I can edit a video. That's fine. I can make, <laughs> I can make a thumbnail real easy, you know? And then like my cognate is in entrepreneurship. And so a lot of the stuff I have, they're like, yeah, make a website. Okay. Done. Yeah. Can you make a YouTube video? Okay. Sure. Make a, make a Instagram page. Got it. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's so easy. Um, but it took a, like a decade of, trial and error to figure that out mm -hmm. uh sorry um quick little thread a uh, little quick note from the producer sometimes we get these in the old show business, <laughs> the show business world this is how we communicate folks um yeah that's that's really cool that, that you know i think out of all the people that have entered the past year you seem to be the one that was the most equipped to take on everything especially with how digital everything became i know for us like you know 
I don't know how many times we can pause with Zoom, but you know, I I shudder to think about some of the earlier you know interviews we've done and, and things like that, and then reflecting back on it, it's really cool to see how you bettered yourself as a, as a content creator, but also you know how to engage with with the the viewership better. Uh, so it's really cool that, that you know you get to watch that, and I've gotten to watch it for a long time. Which I always really appreciated. I didn't know that, by the way. I learned that just now. Like I did, I did not know. I like knew you wa you had watched at one point, but I had no idea. Oh, I would like I was I you know I was craving content like this, especially towards the end of my my time in college, and then that was like you know what it was twenty seventeen ish. That was like my my final year in, in school, so it was like right at the perfect moment because you know I was just watching like really old videos of like an interview with you know, some, some brass player that I love, but then like, finally there was this new fresh thing that I could watch and I was like, oh, let's, let's see what he thinks about that mouthpiece. Cool. All right. What about this one? And, and then it, you know, it just got more and more and more. It's really fun. Well, color me, uh, color me embarrassed <laughs> like, <laughs> or flattered, I guess is the better well, word for well, it. Well, I, I, Hey man, it, I, I hope that other people really got to appreciate as, as much as, you know, I did at the time and, and, Kind of can go back and, and maybe learn a couple things. Um, we were talking about before about you know what's on the horizon, and you mentioned you were had a cool recital coming up on the big boy horn in the back. So, what's on the horizon for you? Yeah, so I mean, it's a little bit of back to form, a little bit of you know more physical performances. So I've got like like you said. So that's my E flat. That's the workhorse. Um, that uh, I've got a recital on that in the fall, and then also. Um, Partially in part er, because I have the Tampa Brass Band and then also because um, I need to do it for my doctorate. Um, I have a chamber recital coming up in the spring. Um, I'm going to be forming the Tampa the Tampa Brass Quar Quartet, which will be a British-style brass uh, quartet. So two cornets, tenor horn, um, and euphonium. And we're planning to do the Paganini Caprice 24, um, but with four voices. So that should be a lot of fun. Really cool. um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that one. And then Tampa Brass Band's going to be back at it. We're going to be doing that whole thing. And then we're the UT studio is going to be bigger than it's ever been. And I'll be working with them. And we'll be doing more tuba euphonium ensemble stuff. And, you know, just plug, plug in the typical, you know, typical nerd stuff. And then, <laughs> and you know, hopefully, I mean, the, the content took a dive when the doctorate started for obvious reasons and hoping to, like, keep that up. And, uh, you know, just do things at a healthy pace. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying my best throughout the year to make sure that instead of trying to come up with more content for everybody, trying to come up with better content that comes out at a mentally healthy, you know, way, way about things, but also using, using, trying to use the things that I'm researching for my doctorate as, you know, content fodder for my YouTube page as well. So that'll be fun. Starting writing the book. I'm writing a, um, I'm going to be writing a book for my doctorate project, um, and it's it's essentially band parents for dummies, kind of an idea. Um, I'll come up with a better title. Um, it'll probably be actually the band parents guide. I don't know. I kind of really like that. I think you should keep that really drive. It well, up. I also think I think the four dummies people also probably have a little bit of a copyright problem with that. <laughs> um, but it's essentially just a handbook to help the communication between band directors and band parents um, and bridge that gap a little bit. Like we were talking about FMEA, there might be somebody out in like Alaska who has no idea what that possibly is. Um, we like to use abbreviations as educators a lot that people don't know. You, you all know it out there. You, you know, you, you have a band dad who comes up to you and says, well, why can't I use WD-40 on the trombone slide? Um, and it's just, it's just going to be a guide as well as resources online that are, that are trying to bridge that gap a little bit. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. I'm interviewing band directors, uh, band parents, um, from all different walks of life. Um, I'm happen to be in a really good situation where I happen to have, just in my years of teaching private lessons, a lot of former band parents and all that sort of a thing. So yeah, I mean, just lots of lots of fun things going on. It never stops. That's awesome. They told me, you know, they told me I wouldn't be busy playing euphonium. They, they all, all the jokes about not having a job as a euphonium player, exactly. and uh, <laughs> showed you. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's awesome to hear, man. That's that's really really cool, and I look forward to to, to hopefully hearing uh, some of that from the Gregson. That you mentioned before, I really would love to hear that. And as a true E flat lover, I would even I will appreciate it even more knowing that it was played on on a great horn. So thank you so much for that. And I look forward to seeing more content, of course, and some more cool videos on the page. Uh, we were able to get some of all the links in the comment section, so please make sure you go to, to check out uh, his website, his YouTube page, his, his page on the Besson website. 
please make sure you give him a couple likes and subscribes on the on the YouTube page, YouTube page of course. Uh, and at the end, reminder, we will be back here next week, Thursday at 6 p.m., not 2 p.m., 6 p.m., uh, with some more really cool content uh, from one of our product specialists and from one of our amazing, fantastic Perfect Crampon artists. So, Aaron, thank you so, so much for being here. I really, really was excited to have you on board to talk about uh, some of the really cool digital stuff that you do and just, you know, your, your more unique path in the, in the euphonium world. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, we really, really been having a good time having you here. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And and to anybody out there watching this either now or in the future, um, feel free to message me or contact me in any way if there's ever anything I can do for you or if there's any way I can be a resource. I mean, as Declan would be for the products that he has for Buffet, I'm more than happy to do so for you guys as well. Um, and uh, yeah. Be happy, never satisfied. That's my sign off for all my videos. So I thought I'd slap this one in here. There it is. That's perfect. Thank you. Well, everybody, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you.